Alrighty, guys, we are back with round two of the PPG case tournament. And to the left hand side, we have Ricky Hernandez playing Gem Knights. And to the right hand side, we have Eduardo playing Trickstar. So we got two brand new decks. We were going to get Goki's. Probably going to get them next round. Michael State, I believe, is still playing it. I really want to get him on stream. Probably the next one. But for now, we have Gem Knight FDK, which, honestly, I'm not a fan of, like, the FDK deck because, well, th the Pendulum FDK, because it's just, like, a really good deck, and it has the ability to FDK. I feel like if it's an FDK deck, you should have, like, a bunch of Garnets or a bunch of Bricks that you can possibly play in the deck, uh, that if you draw them, you know, oh, well, you're playing, you know, you're playing a, an FDK deck, and I feel like... I feel like that version, the Pendulum version, didn't really have those bricks. It didn't have those cards where it's just like, oh, yeah, if you draw it, you know, it's really hard to win and blah, blah, blah. This Gem Knight deck, I, I respect. Okay, like, the deck is just inherently, I think, like, just suboptimal. But it has something really cool that it can do. It can FTK you. So, that's why I'm a fan of, you know, I'm not a fan of all FTKs. And I think FTKs... Sometimes they're, you know, they're, sometimes they're okay, sometimes they're not, uh, but Eric's not going to be with us on this one, by the way, guys. He's going to be typing up a feature match. Uh, he's getting some practice, some on-the-field practice, on-hands, um, on-hands experience on how to uh, properly care cover these matches, so he's probably going to be posting this online somewhere on his blog. He re he just really lo loves, like, doing any type of cover coverage. So we're going to see exactly uh, how this goes with a deck that I'm not too much familiar with. Uh, Block Dragon to the Graveyard. I know Block Dragon is one of the uh, main selling points of this deck. But uh, we'll see exactly how this works out for Ricky. I know Brilliant Fusion, uh, I would imagine, is very popular in his deck and he needs it. <laughs> but I do not see any copy of that uh, whatsoever yet. But it looks like he's going to use Block Dragon, banishing a bunch of Earth Monsters. I believe that's the requirement for it. I'm going to pull it up right here. Yeah, so Block Dragon reads, cannot be normal summoned or sent, must be special summoned from your hand or graveyard by banishing three Earth Monsters from your hand and or graveyard and cannot be special summoned in other ways. Rock-type monsters you control cannot be destroyed except by battle. If this card is sent to the field to the graveyard, you can add up to three rock type monsters from your deck to your hand whose level is equal eight. Okay, so I'm guessing Ricky just in this scenario wants Black Dragon to bring out and then link with it in order to get more pieces to his hand. But it looks like he was only able to make a Mrs. Radiant and a Block Dragon, so. Uh, maybe being able to further his plays next turn. Not sure. I would assume he would also need some type of fusion spell card. That would also be a good way of sending Block Dragon from the field to the graveyard. But uh, Foolish Burialing it is what you want to do at all points because it is like a Dragon Ruler. You could always special summon it from the graveyard just by banishing those rock type monsters. And all uh, Gem Knights, uh, go figure, are all rocks. So. It works very synergistically in his deck. Eddie playing a little bit more of a linear deck, if you want to say. Uh, Trick Stars, they have their own Stratos, and there it is, Candina. They have their own Field Spell card, which searches the Stratos, uh, which is Trick Star Light Stage, right down there at the bottom of the screen. And the Stratos, not only can it search Trickstar monsters, it could also search Trickstar spell and traps. So, Eddie, with a pretty good hand here, you're going to see a Pot of Desires come down on the board. I think that was a double light save stage, if I'm not mistaken. So, Eddie opening double light stage, Pot of Desires. It looks like he has Scapegoat in hand, too, for some Link Summoning. And the Trickstar Reincarnation that he searched, he still also has a Licorice to bounce back that Candina. But we'll see what he opts to do here. Yeah, Trick Stars is a deck that I had to go against, unfortunately, at YCS Memphis. It was so... It's just such a powerful deck, what they can do. 
going to regeki down board for Eddie. Okay, so I think uh, Ricky's going to read his Mrs. Radiant because I believe that also gets something on board. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can target one Earth monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. And Block Dragon, I believe. Rock type monsters you control cannot be destroyed except by battle. So that block dragon is not going to go anywhere. Yeah, it's pretty powerful because block dragon does have 3,000 defense. But Eddie here is setting three. So uh, a solemn strike, a scapegoat. And a Trickstar Reincarnation. The Trickstar Reincarnation is going to be very powerful, especially if Eddie has a Droll and Lockbird, which I wasn't able to see in his hand. But Ricky playing down a Gemma Armadillo, which I believe is the Stratos of the deck. And it looks like Eddie's just going to Solemn Strike that immediately. Hmm. But interesting here because Ricky does have Block Dragon on board. So, Solemn Strike will not destroy the Gem Armadillo. But it will negate the effect. So, Eddie here, still with Scapegoat and Trickstar Reincarnation. And Ricky deciding to go on the offensive. All right. So Ricky was not able to pull off the FTK here, but he still does have a lot of pressure in the form of Block Dragon, which is 2,500 attack, nothing to scoff at, and a Gem Armadillo, which is 1,700, I believe. So Eddie's here on the defensive. He's going to go Trickstar Reincarnation, Eddie's hand, uh, Ricky's hand away, but Ricky's hand only had one card, and it was Unexpected Die. So Ricky's going to go ahead and draw that one card off board. And Eddie still has a scapegoat set. Yeah, so Gem Armadillo is 1700 attack. And both of the, Ricky will off both of them in the main phase two for a Mrs. Radiant. But unfortunately, Eddie does have the Ash for the Block Dragon, and Block Dragon will not search Eddie's deck for three monsters. Man, that really hurts. That's really got to hurt, because that's the only reason why he went into that Mrs. Radiant. And Eddie's going to go with an end phase scapegoat, and that's going to let Eddie go into some powerful links here. He's going to have a wide variety of options, and we'll see what he chooses to go with now. Oh, okay. Let me get confirmation on what happened there. It looks like somebody scooped. Yeah, so Ricky did scoop that game from the scapegoats from Eddie. Eddie was able to, well, he was about to link four. 
and Ricky was literally top decking. And I don't think he had any more fuel in his yard for the block dragon. So that's pretty understandable. Now going into game two here. We'll see what how Ricky can approach this matchup a little bit better. It looks like Eddie opened up very, very powerful. But at the end of it, didn't seem like he had a huge control of the game. I mean, that scapegoat was obviously very powerful at the end because Ricky's resources were down to zero. But Ricky does have some options in the sideboard. Um, I would say Twin Twisters, 100%, uh, would come in against him. I don't think there's anything else too significant that Ricky can actually bring in to make this matchup better. Uh, Trickstar is just inherently a very, a very hard matchup to beat. Eddie, though, in the sideboard to stop Ricky from doing these shenanigans. He does have Artifact Lancia, which is something that can be game-breaking if Eddie does resolve because Artifact Lancia reads that your opponent cannot banish, or no cards can be banished at all. So that's going to help a lot because Ricky's whole combo is based around banishing cards for the Block Dragon. And if he can fire one of those off on one of those turns that Ricky's actually trying to go for the FTK, then he can actually just shut him down completely, make him pass a turn, and then Eddie can go and set up the board that he needs to set up. Alright. <coughs> so we're going to have a Gemini Fusion down for Ricky. And that's exactly what you want to see in it. And in a lot of these decks, they usually all look the same. They have those extender spells or starter spells that you always want to start with. And this one lets him fusion summon one Gemini fusion from his extra deck using monsters from his hand or his side of the field as fusion materials. So it's not as good and brilliant as brilliant in the way that you can use cards uh, from your deck. This one actually requires you to have them in your hand or on the field. Now, it also has another effect. If it's in your graveyard, you can banish... Uh, Gemini monster from your graveyard to add that card to his hand. So what he's going to do here, he's going to send the Ophidian and the, uh, I don't know exactly how to pronounce that guy's name, Gemini T, Mr. T, he sends that to the graveyard, Ophidian triggers, a special summons Gemini T, and then he can banish the, the other Gemini, the Ophidian, in the graveyard to bring back the uh, Gemini fusion. And now he's going to go into the brand new Link monster, brand new card from I want to say the last set. This is uh, Gem Knight Phantom Quartz. It's two Gem Knight monsters, or any Gem Dash monsters, to be completely accurate. If this card is Link Summoned, you can add one Gem Knight monster from your deck to your hand. You can pay a thousand life points. Fusion Summon a Gem Knight monster from your extra deck by shuffling fusion material monsters in your possession listed into your deck that are banished or in the graveyard, but it cannot attack directly this turn. So. That's pretty good. For the cost of a thousand life points, you can actually just fusion summon without having any type of fusion type cards. So not being needing to rely on any of the fusion uh, spell cards that Ricky plays in his deck. And fun fact, I don't believe this is for once per turn. This is not once per turn. Oh no, I'm sorry. You can only use each effect of Gem Knight Phantom Quartz once per turn. That is the last sentence on the card. So that would have been actually insane because this card is very similar to uh, Magical Scientist, but you do need to have the materials. So if it wasn't once per turn, it actually wouldn't be too crazy. But because these Gem Knight monsters actually just require like two gem, they don't have like very specific requirements. They just require like gem cards to be involved. Then, you know, it's something that it can get out of hand. And Ricky's going to go and do the Gem Knight Lady Brilliant Diamond, which is three Gem Knight monsters. And once per turn, he can send a face-up Gem Knight monster he controls to the graveyard. And if he does, special summon one Gem Knight fusion monster from his extra deck, ignoring the summoning conditions. 
and a Seraphonite. We all know what Seraphonite does. Uh, an extra normal summon for the turn. And it looks like he's going to link four. Because the Phantom Quartz was two. Yeah, and they're all Earths. Yeah, so Curious is three monsters with the same attribute but different types to link three. And it lets you Foolish Burial any card from your deck. And when you do send a card from your deck to the graveyard, by an effect, you mill three. So Ricky's going to go and mill three here. Obviously sending the Block Dragon. Block Dragon is what Ricky needs for his whole deck to function. It is, like we said, very reminiscent, very similar to a Dragon Ruler. He's going to go and banish those three Earth Monsters, and he's going to summon the Block Dragon. Activating another Gem Knight Fusion. Deciding on what he wants to send here. He's going to send Ophidian and Black Dragon. Black Dragon is going to get the ability. Ophidian is going to get the obli ob ability. <laughs> That's a lot of special summons. Well, actually, you got one special summon from the Obsidian. I'm sorry, not Ophidian. Obsidian. That's going to target a uh, level 4 lower monster in the graveyard. Normal monster. And special summon it. And Crystal Rose. That's a new one. That's actually one that I have not seen before. But Ricky looks like he's playing one copy. So the single singleton copy. Once per turn, he can send one Gem Knight or Melodious monster from his hand or deck to the graveyard. And if he does, this card's name becomes the sent monster's name until the end phase. So I can pretty much copy anything for a fusion. If it's in the graveyard, he can banish one fusion monster from his graveyard, special summon this card in defense position. You can only use this effect of Crystal Rose once per turn. So that's pretty interesting. He's going to use it to go into a gem knife fusion, most likely that requires a specific name in his deck, which I can only imagine. Uh, you saw Zirconia on board, which is just one Gemini monster plus one rock type monster. Crystal Rose being a rock, by the way. So that's also another huge plus in playing a card like Crystal Rose. I've seen only like one build of this Gemini FTK deck. I've never played against it. And I've only seen a deck profile of someone that I believe won a regional with it or top aided probably and I don't remember seeing Crystal Rose so this might be he might be onto something I don't know how generic this card is in the deck but it seems really interesting uh, from Kamal and Andres uh, Kamal won Hazard uh, Andres won game one and then Kamal won game two, and then Kamal ended up winning game three, going second, because Andres did not open very, very good, unfortunately. I don't think he opened any Link monsters or anything like that, or any XYZ monsters. And Ricky going off here, he has two Zirconias on board, which are 2,900 attack. Oh, one's going to go away here for the Gemini Fusion. We'll see what he chooses to go into. Okay, so he chooses, I believe that's the Lapis, the Lapis Lazuli. The Lapis Lazuli is one that requires a Gem Knight Lapis and a Gem Knight monster. It must be fusion summoned by the above fusion material monsters. You can only special summon Gem Knight Lapis Lazuli once per turn. So you can only summon one of these, no matter how many fusions he has. Once per turn, he can send one Gemini monster from his main deck or extra deck to the graveyard. And if he does, inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each special summoned monster on the field. Wow. All right. So. I'm not quite sure how he's going to burn his opponent if he can only summon one of these per turn. 
but I could just be completely wrong here. That Lapis Lazuli can hit his opponent for 25 and, and even up to 35 if he actually inherits all every single Link zone. So not only his opponent's extra monster zone, but his own extra monster zone. Ricky's going to keep going here. As you can see, he does have the... Oh, no, he does not have the opportunity, actually, unfortunately. He cannot use that extra link zone yet. Eh, I wouldn't go as far as to say, like, this is a bad FTK. Like I said, I, I think the bad FTK is really just a pendulum FTK. Because it's, it's not only a very powerful deck, but it also has access to just an unfair way of winning. Ricky's deck, on the other hand, it's not the most, like, popular or fluid or just cohesive deck, but it does have an interesting way of winning, which happens to be an FTK, which I don't think is like the worst thing in the world. I, I think I would prefer to live in a world where you have inconsistent decks that, you know, are really like pull off something cool every so often than a deck that's just inherently overpowered and it gives you, and it gives you a chance to go infinite, you know? But I, I don't know. I, I could be wrong. I know many people have not seen this Gem Gemini FTK. I know a lot of people just don't even know what the steps are, so I figured this would be something that's interesting for people to know. And it looks like Ricky finalizes it with a Gem Knight Master Diamond, which reads here, must be Fusion Summon cards. This card gains 100 attack for each Gem Knight monster in your graveyard. Once per turn, you can banish one level 7 or lower Gem Knight Fusion monster from your graveyard until the end phase. This card's name becomes that monster's and replaces this and replaces this effect with that monster's original effects. So... We saw exactly how Ricky's Gemini deck ended up performing once he was able to get the appropriate pieces. You saw that he did need to open with the Gemini Fusion in order to propel his engine. I believe he had the Foolish Burial uh, for the Block Dragon. That might have been last game, but he did have the Curious to get the Block Dragon in the graveyard. He was able to Fusion, Fusion, Fusion. Uh, so the whole purpose of the deck is pretty much to go into the Gemini Lapis, Lady Lapis Lazuli. Uh, to burn your opponent for anywhere from 25k if you fill up all the normal monster zones, uh, which it looks like what that's what he did, and then go into uh, two more copies of Gem Knight Master Diamond, which only requires three Gem Knight monsters. But like I said, you need to have the cards to fusion summon into these guys. Uh, we saw that he was able to use a, a Link monster that does cheat out some fusion monsters, but those aren't the fusion monsters that you need to cheat out to finish winning the game. It's just something that just progresses the game state to the point where you just keep getting special summoned monsters. You fill up the board as fast as possible and then you just burn your opponent. So it's it's a little bit more intricate too because I know the Pendulum FTK deck, uh, that just requires a few cards. I mean, I, th I think it's any two Dark Pendulums to go into the Starving Venom, right? The Supreme King Starving Venom. And then you have the Instant Fusion to bring out the little uh, Lycoris Bird. Or whatever you call it. And it's just... Or the Nightingale. So that that's kind of like a cheap, you know, FDK. Because you're like, wow, Instant Fusion's like good in some scenarios anyways. Like I would still play the card in my deck 100%. And... And it's just something that's just like... Alright, well... Sure, I'm not going to lose anything really by playing this FDK. So why not? Because your whole deck is Dark Pendulum anyways, right? So that's something that... Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't agree with it, to be honest. But uh, this Gemini deck, not unstoppable, of course. Uh, Eddie did not... I mean, he could have had... I don't know if he sided in Ghost Ogre. But if he sided in Ghost Ogre, he could have done something. Like I said, the Artifact Lancia would have been something that 100% would have just made Ricky pass his turn. It's just so easy to combat if uh, Eddie does open. But good thing is here that 1-1 one, one going into game 3, Eddie's going to be able to go first. And sometimes that's all you need. 
being able to go first in order to set up some type of uh, just counterplay, something that you can actually interact with your opponent. But it looks like Eddie did open with an Ash, so he will be able to interact no matter what, even if he did go second. But he is going first here with the terraforming off, and I could only imagine he's going to get the light stage, and the light stage is going to get something like a Candino. All right, so Candina. And he has a reincarnation and a licorice in hand. I don't believe I saw a drill unlock in Eddie's hand. He is playing three copies. He's going to be able to uh, double licorice here. Licorice. Setting a reincarnation, and I believe I saw a scapegoat in his hand. Yes, it looks like Ricky did open a Predator plant. And that's really odd. He has a gene, war a gene warped werewolf in his hand. Mm, okay, I think that's for the unexpected die. It might be another copy for an unexpected die target. And we're going to see if Eddie's going to be able to power through some hand traps here. <laughs> Eddie... Yeah, he he loves his trick stars. And Gem and same thing for Ricky actually. He loves his uh Ricky does love his Gem Knights. And Eddie loves his trick stars. <laughs> these guys are two local players. They're very well known for playing these decks. So Eddie's gonna do some math here because he is gonna take Ricky is gonna take some damage, some major damage from this. Uh, Licorice is going to trigger twice, and so are the light stages. It's going to be uh, once on each trick star. And Ricky's going to trade in his hand for a new hand. And is this one as powerful as it lasts? Looks like he still does have a Lone Fire Blossom, though. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly why we're here for, so we can help trolls like you learn to play this deck. Because this is actually a deck that I would like to play also. It seems pretty fun. Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm always up for something that not everyone is playing. And with Flames of Destruction... Ooh... All right, so Ricky just opting to pass turn. Doesn't look like he had too much after that Lone Fire Blossom. Eddie's got a scapegoat in the end phase, which is very devastating, as you can see from game one. Ricky just scooped that card. So we're going to see what Eddie can pump out here. He's going to make a Mrs. Radiant first to free up a Link Space, then he's going to make another Mrs. Radiant. And it looks like he's going to just go for game here because Ricky did take a lot of damage. He took a lot of damage from the Trickstar Reincarnation with Double Icarus on board. So I can only imagine that Eddie has game 100% here. Decks like Ricky's will not have any defense to this onslaught from Eddie. So Ricky's going to offer the handshake and Eddie's going to take it here in 2-1 fashion after getting Gem Knight FTK'd last game and uh that was pretty cool uh honestly i really like to see 
when decks do exactly what they were supposed to do, and Ricky's did that game two, and you can see in game three, Eddie's deck did exactly what it needed to do there. So, uh, both decks performing, you know, as you would expect. Eddie, thankfully, did have the hand trap to stop Ed Ricky. You could only imagine what Ricky could have done on that turn, but um, sometimes decks as fragile as that can just just get crushed by one thing as small as, uh, you know, just one Ash Blossom. And, and take it from an Infernoid player like myself, uh, you know, just, you know, having the Ash on the on the left arm or Ash on the grass can just be something that can just uh, leave you out of the game. But anyways, guys, we're going to go into round three momentarily. Uh, we're going to have Eric back in the booth. He's going to go and uh, wrap up this uh typed up feature match and then he's going to come back on here uh cast with me a little bit more and we're going to move on to uh the third round momentarily so we're going to go on a short commercial break thank you guys again for watching and we'll be right back